A potentially massive wrench has just been thrown into Israeli-Russian relations in an incident that took place over Syrian airspace. Shortly before the Yom Kippur holiday, Israeli jets apparently launched an airstrike on a Syrian military target in the country. Syrian defense missiles fired back, attempting to block the volley, but struck a Russian plane in the crossfire. All 15 passengers aboard that plane were killed in the incident. This has put Israeli-Russian relations to the test unlike no other event in recent memory. In a rare move, the Israeli Air Force admitted that they had indeed conducted an operation in Syrian airspace. Syria immediately accused Israel of intentionally using the Russian plane as a cover to avoid retaliation. And even in Moscow, Russia's immediate reaction was one of skepticism that Israel had acted properly. Russia is, of course, an essential linchpin for Israeli interests in Syria, which mostly revolve around the removal of Iranian proxy armies from the northern border. Needless to say, this incident posed quite a dilemma for Israeli leaders then. In the hours before Yom Kippur, Prime Minister Netanyahu was on the phone with Russian President Vladimir Putin, conveying his sorrow for the deaths of 15 Russian nationals. Shortly thereafter, Putin issued a formal statement to the media, mostly absolving Israel of responsibility for the incident. Contrary to Putin's words on Monday, however, Moscow has apparently just pulled a complete 180. Earlier today, Russia's Tel Aviv embassy posted the following on Twitter, accusing Israel's air force of, quote, irresponsible and unfriendly actions that led to the downing of their plane and these 15 deaths. For now, it remains unclear where Israeli-Russian relations truly stand or whether or not this incident can be sorted out without straining tensions any further. One day soon, I believe our world is going to radically change. As we can see by recent news events, prophecies found in Isaiah 17 and Ezekiel 38 and 39 seem to be edging toward fulfillment. A Syrian missile brought down the Russian plane over the Mediterranean, killing all 15 people on board. But Russia blamed Israel for the crash, saying it was caught in the crossfire as Israeli fighter jets attacked targets in Syria. The Israeli pilots were using the Russian aircraft as a shield and pushed it into the line of fire of the Syrian defense. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called Russian President Vladimir Putin and expressed condolences for the death of the Russian servicemen, but said the blame was on Syria. Israel established a deconfliction agreement with Russia several years ago to enable Israel to strike Iranian targets inside Syria without colliding with Russia. For Israel, maintaining that understanding is critical to its defense. The IDF released a statement saying it had followed the deconfliction agreement with the Russians in carrying out this mission. They said Syrians used extensive and inaccurate anti-aircraft fire. The Israeli Air Force jets were already in Israeli airspace when the Russian plane was hit. And during the Israeli airstrike, the Russian plane was not in the area. Former Israeli National Security Advisor Yaakov Amidror said in a telephone briefing that the strikes in Syria are a high-priority mission for Israel. The importance of the target will not be changed. It is a very important target for Israel to prevent the Iranians from building this independent war machine in Syria and to prevent them from transferring game-changer weapon systems into the hands of Hezbollah. United Nations Special Envoy to Syria urged the players to exercise restraint. We call upon all parties, especially when we are getting this type of positive news regarding what could have been a dramatic military escalation, to refrain from military actions elsewhere that would only exacerbate an already complex situation. Regarding Iran's presence in Syria, the U.S. says Iran has to go. Iran cannot dictate the future for the Syrian people. If Russia is interested in bringing peace to Syria, it should make sure Iran and its militias leave Syria once and for all. The risk of a broader conflict will leave with them. For now, Amidror said, the key to maintaining Israel's ability to strike inside Syria is convincing Russia that the incident wasn't Israel's fault. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14, the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. Then behold, at eventide, trouble, and before the morning he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us, and the lot of those who rob us. Isaiah 17, 9, in that day his strong cities will be as a forsaken bow and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation.
Isaiah 17, 1 and 14 tell us Damascus will be destroyed in a single night. Verse 9 suggests it is the children of Israel who caused this desolation, possibly with a nuclear weapon. An Israeli delegation now heading from Moscow today. This is an attempt to ease tensions after days after a Russian plane was shot down by Syrian anti-aircraft missiles. Moscow blames Israel. Trey Yinks is live in Jerusalem. What started these talks, Trey? Well, good morning, Bill. That's right. An Israeli delegation is headed to Moscow today. This coming after an incident Monday night where Syrian anti-aircraft missiles shot down a Russian plane, killing all 15 people on board. At the same time, the Israeli Air Force was firing on a target in western Syria, said to be holding Iranian weapons for the Lebanese uh, militant group Hezbollah. The Syrian military responded by trying to intercept this attack, ultimately misfiring and downing the Russian plane. Now, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu Yahoo trying to ease tensions between Jerusalem and Moscow, sending his top Air Force general there to Russia to brief officials on exactly what happened. This comes after a phone call between Russian President Vladimir Putin and Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu earlier this week, basically where we saw the Russian President Vladimir Putin say to Netanyahu, do not let an incident like this happen again. Now, uh, the Trump administration also weighing in this week, Secretary of State uh, Mike Pompeo saying uh, that ultimately this was a tragic situation, but that it highlighted the need to find a political solution on the ground in Syria. Ezekiel 38, 1 through 9. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords, Persia, Cush and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, Beth Garma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes, many peoples are with you, be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered, in the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war. The land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you. These are the modern day nations listed in Ezekiel 38 and 39 who will be mustered in the latter years to attack Israel. Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, and Ethiopia. God tells us exactly what will happen to Iran, Russia, Turkey, and the many peoples with you when they attack Israel in Ezekiel 38, 18 through 23, and 39 to 7 and 8. And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him into judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. I've been informed by top-ranking military officials that Israel has been unable to launch even a single plane in defense. As I stand here, fighter planes are exploding in midair. They're crashing and falling to the ground without any explanation. And while no one can seem to give me any reason for why this is happening, I can tell you this. This all-out, unprecedented attempt to destroy Israel appears to be failing. God is the one who fights this battle for Israel. He does it for two reasons. To make his holy name known in the midst of his people Israel, that the nation shall know that he is the Lord, 
the Holy One in Israel. Zechariah 2, 8, 9 For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoiled for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Israel is precious to Almighty God, the apple of his eye. He is simply saying, You touch my chosen nation Israel, you poke me in the eye. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Kim Jong-un pulled out all the stops to welcome South Korean President Moon Jae-in to North Korea with cheering crowds, an intimate lunch, and one of those famous highly choreographed North Korean stadium shows. All for this. Today, both leaders promising to ease tensions and Kim Jong-un promising to scale back his nuclear weapons program. To turn the Korean Peninsula into a land of peace without nuclear weapons and nuclear threats, Kim said. Kim agreeing to close his main missile testing facility and saying he'll close his biggest nuclear complex if the U.S. takes corresponding measures. North and South Korea also agreed to create a no-fly zone on their border. Over those mountains there, you can see in North Korea there. Meaning U.S. Air Force flights, like this one we recently joined, are, in principle, now no longer allowed. Prior to becoming president, it looked like we were going to war with North Korea, and now we have uh, a lot of progress. But North Korea has so far done nothing to get rid of the nuclear bombs it already has. And U.S. intelligence officials have told NBC News they believe North Korea is still making nuclear weapons. Lester, despite that, Kim is planning to go to Seoul soon, and North and South Korea even say they will make a joint bid for the Olympics. So he's getting a lot, and so far, still keeping his nuclear weapons. The United States Air Force is calling for more squad squadrons to prepare for possible war against China and Russia. RT correspondent Dan Cohen has the story. On Monday, Air Force Secretary Heather Wilson called for a total of 386 squadrons by the year 2030, up from the 312 operating today. The proposal was prepared to meet the demands of the national defense strategy the Pentagon unveiled in January. Wilson spoke about the proposal at the Air Force's Air, Space and Cyber Conference in Washington, D.C. on Monday. We must see the world as it is. That is why the national defense strategy explicitly recognizes that we have returned to an era of great power competition. We must prepare. The 24% increase would prepare the Air Force for a possible conflict with major powers China and Russia, both of which have recently conducted large-scale military exercises. 300,000 Russian troops took part in its biggest ever war games. China also sent 3,200 troops, indicating a burgeoning military alliance between the two countries. If the United States government approves the Air Force's demands, we would see intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance squadrons increase from 40 to 62 between 25 and 2030. 
Tanker squadrons, which allow warplanes to refuel in midair, would go from 40 to 54, and fighter squadrons would go from 55 to 62. Additionally, space squadrons would grow from 16 to 23. The taxpayer bill for such a hike would be a whopping $49.9 billion and an additional $13 billion per year in operating costs. But a 2017 RAND Corporation report says that, quote, U.S. forces could, under plausible assumptions, lose the next war they're called upon to fight, despite the United States outspending China military forces by a ratio of 2.7 to 1 and Russia by 6 to 1. So an increase in military spending doesn't necessarily translate to the battlefield dominance the U.S. envisions. Matthew 24:12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Terrible scene today in Middleton, Wisconsin. A workplace shooting a man, a worker in his cubicle, at his desk, suddenly opening fire. ABC's Alex Perez from Wisconsin tonight. Terrifying moments tonight at this Wisconsin business complex after an employee opened fire inside the offices of this software company. Call you the and they heard multiple gunshots. About 10.30 this morning, the gunman, police say, was near his office cubicle when he suddenly unleashed a spray of bullets. The shooter had a pistol. Uh, semi-automatic pistol. Uh, we're told that he had a number of magazines, extra magazines and so on. Frightened employees escorted out. We saw one person that was really bloodied being escorted out to one of the ambulances. We just saw the police officers, you know, coming storming towards the building. Others hiding to stay alive. I'm on the phone with a caller that is hiding under his desk. Nearby buildings placed on lockdown as police search for the suspect. Later, tracking him down and shooting him. Four people shot in the rampage, three of them still recovering in the hospital. And David, the suspect was hospitalized but later died, leaving investigators tonight searching for a motive. Officials here calling those officers who moved in and acted quickly to stop the gunman heroes. And a man suspected of stabbing a jogger to death in Washington, D.C. is still at large this morning. Police say the suspect attacked 35-year-old Wendy Martinez in her northwest neighborhood Tuesday night. Surveillance footage captured the unidentified assailant near the scene of the crime. Chip Reed is on the street where the deadly stabbing took place. Chip, good morning. Well, good morning. D.C. police say Wendy Martinez was jogging right here Tuesday night at about 8 p.m. when she was attacked by a man with a knife. They say she ran into this restaurant behind me, desperately looking for someone to help her. This is uh, one of those types of unsettling incidents uh, that sometimes happen uh, in large cities. D.C. Police Chief Peter Newsham said the attack on 35-year-old Wendy Martinez was likely random. What the motive was, we don't know. Uh, the best thing that we can do right now is identify the person that's responsible. Police are looking for this man who was seen wearing a long mustard-colored shirt, dark sweatpants, and light-colored sandals. They recovered a knife near the crime scene. Martinez rushed inside this Asian-American restaurant pleading for help. Manager Tommy Wu showed us this surveillance video of the incident. Martinez was bleeding profusely from her neck before collapsing. Patrons rushed to her aid. They tried to prov uh, provide medical assistance to her. Unfortunately, she was taken to a local hospital where she was pronounced dead. Martinez was an avid runner and chief of staff for Fiscal Note, a technology and management company. Her family said she became engaged just last week and was excited to be planning her wedding. She was a devout Christian, a wonderful friend, and a driven professional. Her family wrote in a statement, everything you hope that a daughter and a friend could be. News of the incident has this normally low crime neighborhood of Washington, D.C. on edge. I really hope they catch whoever did this. Police say there was only one assailant and there's a $25,000 reward for information leading to arrest. Nora, a really sad story deeply affecting this neighborhood. As you can see, dozens of people have already left flowers. I was so upset when I heard about this, Chip. Thank you. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, 
lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people, turn away. We're going to move now to a story that unfolded this afternoon in western Pennsylvania where a man opened fire outside a judge's office. At least four were hurt, including a police officer. The shooter is dead tonight. Julie Grant of our CBS station KDKA is in Masontown, Pennsylvania. Julie, what can you tell us about this? Jeff, good evening to you. The community here in Mason Town is visibly shaken up. This is a business district where this occurred, and people have been lining the streets all afternoon in shock and disbelief at what occurred in this quiet, peaceful community and at this municipal court building right behind me. It was around 2 o'clock today. It was business as usual at the magistrate court when a gunman opened fire, first blowing out the entrance to the courtroom, blowing out the glass doors, and then going in and shooting. There were about 60 people inside of that building. You can imagine the terror and the horror witnesses saying they heard screaming as people were trying to get out of the way of the shooter. We understand the shooter was scheduled to appear in court on domestic violence charges of strangulation and terroristic threats, and a police officer was shot in the hand. He was helped by a good Samaritan out in the parking lot behind me. Jeff? All right, Julie, thank you. Frightening situation there. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24, verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. People around the world are asking what is going on. Everything seems to be falling apart in every possible way. Violence is at epidemic levels with all the nations around the world full of anxiety and uncertainty of what tomorrow will bring. The Middle East is consumed by civil wars. Planet Earth is on the verge of World War III. Earthquakes are more frequent and more intense. Extreme weather has become the norm. We are seeing diseases that were once eradicated roaring back to life. People are starving to death because of politics, war, drought, and other weather-related catastrophes. People are looking for answers, and those who have eyes to see and ears to hear know exactly what is happening. Jesus, who is God in flesh form, is letting us know that through the events taking place around the world, he is returning. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. Occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!
The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.